Okay guys, here we go with our daily bell ringer. This is meant to be a warm up for your brain. There's an assortment of different math problems for you to do every day. And there's one slide for every day. So in this video, I'm going to go over, um, let's see, six different problems, no, five problems just for today. So it's five problems per day. All right, daily fact family. 4, 7, and 28. All right, well, this is easy. These two, we can reverse. 4 times 7 and 7 times 4. They mean the same thing. Both of them equal 28. And I can take my product, 28. I can divide it into four equal groups and get 7 in each group or I can divide it into seven equal groups and get four in each group, okay? So that was quick, easy, and painless. Next we have a measurement problem. Whenever you see the standard with an MD in it, it stands for measurement. And this is important to note because it's a good idea for you to kind of think about what you know about a topic, right? You guys know a lot about measurement. This is asking us to think about tons. This T here stands for tons, and a ton is a very large unit of measurement. Think like elephants or dump trucks full of rocks. They want to know how many pounds is equivalent to seven tons, and they're kind of helping us get started by telling us that one ton is equivalent to 2,000 pounds. Okay, so LB stands for pounds. That's also important to know. All right, so let's just kind of think about this for a second. If one ton is equivalent to 2,000 pounds, what would two tons be? 4,000 pounds, of course. What would three tons be? Six thousand pounds. Hmm. What about seven tons? Could we do it just by multiplying? Seven tons times two thousand pounds in each ton. What does that give us? Let's multiply our non-zero digits first. Seven times two is 14, and I have three zeros. One, two, three. So I must also have three zeros on this side of my um, equal sign. So seven tons is equivalent to 14,000 pounds. All right, now they want to know how many tons is equivalent to 10,000 pounds. So we have to figure out question mark is equivalent to 10,000 pounds. Well, since I could multiply my number of tons times 2,000 pounds in each ton, let's do question mark, like mystery number. Let's, let's be algebraic. Let's call it N for mystery number, okay? All right, N for mystery number times 2,000 pounds in each ton equals 10,000 pounds. So what mystery number times 2,000 will give us 10,000. Well, I know that five times two gives me 10. So that means five times 20 will give me 100. Five times 200 would give, give me 1,000. Five times 2,000 would give me 10,000. So I'm thinking it's gotta be five tons. Five tons is equivalent to 10,000 pounds. 
All right, find the volume of the rectangular prism by counting cubic units. So volume is our way of measuring the inside space of a three-dimensional object. Volume is the inside space. So we can count length times width times height Or we could look at how many of these little cubes are in one layer and then multiply that by our number of layers. There's a couple different ways we could do this. Let's just start by looking at one layer. I'm going to kind of shade it in so that you can see it a little better. This is just one layer of cubes here. One layer of cubes. How many cubes are in that one layer? I want you to pause this video and count up how many cubes are in this one layer. So when I'm counting, let's see how many I can count. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. I've got 24 cubes in that first layer. And I can see that there are three layers. My first layer was the red cubes. My second layer, I'm gonna shade blue. Those are my blue cubes. And then my third layer, I'm gonna shade green. What's 24 times three layers? Let's figure that out. 24 times three layers. Well, you can do this in a couple different ways. Let's see, 20 times three gives me 60. And four times three gives me 12. For a total of, what? Pause this video and see if you can figure it out. Most of you guys are multiplying when I'm talking to you in our number talks, it seems like most of you are multiplying like this. Go ahead and pause the video and see what you get. Four times three is 12. Put down your two. Carry your one. Three times two is six. Plus three, plus one more. Wait, I'm doing that wrong. Blech. Plus one more gives me seven. Whew, getting a little tongue tied here. Okay. So that's a total of 72 cubes. All right, turn along. Name and tell everything you can about the following shape. So they want you to make statements about what you notice about this shape. First of all, how many sides does it have? It has four sides. One, two, three, four. And what do we call shapes that have four sides? It's a quadrilateral. What else do we notice about it? What do we call what do we call these two sides where they run side by side and they never ever 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 move closer together or further apart and they don't intersect ever. They're always the same distance apart. We call those parallel lines. So these two lines that I shaded in red are parallel and I can indicate that they're parallel with these little arrows here. Okay, um, let's look at the angles and see if we can make a couple statements about our angles. What would you call this angle? Would you call it acute or obtuse? That is an acute angle or two acute angles because they're less. Than 90 degrees. And what would you call these two angles? Would you call these acute or obtuse? Those are obtuse because they're greater than 90 degrees. Like if I draw a line here, 
here's my 90 degree angle, and then this is all extra. Draw a line here, here's my 90 degree angle, and then that's extra there. So there's two obtuse angles. Complete the line plot using the following data. Now we don't know what kind of data this is, it doesn't tell us. We don't know if this is like somebody's height or how many M&Ms they ate today or how many pages of a book they ate today. It just tells us to make the line plot. So first thing I always do when I make a line plot is um, find my smallest value and my highest value. So let me actually erase some of this just so I can, was that erase? Yeah. I'll make it a little easier for me. Okay, let's see, lowest value, maybe 43? No, 42, okay. So I'm gonna start with 42, and then I want my line plot to go all the way up to, what's my highest value? Looks like 56 will be my highest value. Now with a line plot, you can have values that are lower than that that just don't have any data. That's up to you. Uh-oh, look, I'm not really gonna have enough space here. So let me, let me do a better job of spacing this out. Let's see, I gotta have in between 40, let's say I wanna do in between 40 and 60. 50 is going to be in the middle. Here's 45. Here's 55. 41, 42, 43, 44. 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. Okay, so sometimes if it takes you two tries to get your spacing the way you want it, that's totally fine with me. All right, now I'm just going to put each value on my line plot and cross it out once I've put it on my line plot so I don't count it twice. So 54, put an X. 43, X. 49, X. 51, X. 43, again, got it. 53, here, another 53, here, 56, and 42. Okay, and that's it. I can't label my x-axis because I don't know what this data represents, so I can't put a label on there. And that's it. That's my six problems. All right, see you guys tomorrow for another awesome edition of our bell ringer.